Welcome to Round Hill Radio, the podcast from Round Hill Community Church. Through our conversations, we discover the holy and the ordinary, find moments of grace and peace, and redefine what we're talking about. We talk about faith. I want to welcome everyone to Round Hill Radio, and uh, it's a real delight to have with us on our show today, uh, Tom Irwin. And Tom is based in Los Angeles. He works with several artists, and he is of major importance to them because he helps them to essentially get their art out into the public, out into the world so that it can be seen and enjoyed. And so Tom, we're really grateful to have you on the show. Thank you, good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me. So Tom, um, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and the work you do in relationship with the artists. And, and I will say that we developed a connection with you, especially because of a relationship that you had with a wonderful artist named Father Bill Moore, who has been certainly an inspiration for me, and you've had a chance to get to know him. So tell us about your, your work with these artists and what you uh, try to do for them and with them. Sure. So my job is, in very simply put, a uh, simple way to phrase what I do is that I do the, I let the artists be the creatives and I'm the business side of their lives, meaning that they, cre- they create things and I encourage them to finish them. And when they're done and they tell me they're ready to go, I take them out and, you know, develop relationships that will then have venues for them to sell them in, whether it's through commercial applications such as projects, public art projects, or and be a rostered artist at a gallery, you know, all points in between. But a lot of my work is done through uh, brick and mortar uh retail art galleries. Okay, great. So I um, I guess it was a few years ago, I don't know how many years ago now, that I happened to be scrolling through Pinterest, which I do quite often, looking for images and artwork that might be inspirational. And I came across a, a style of art that really spoke to me and found out that it was part of the body of work that had been created by a wonderful man named Father Bill Moore, um, based in Los Angeles, Roman Catholic priest, affiliated with a parish, but an actual active artist for most of his life. And I um, uh, happened to visit his website where he made the mistake of including his phone number on his website. And I called him, left a message, and he called me back. And we had one really great conversation. I wish we had had more, but that's what led us to you. And so can you tell us a little bit about how you got to know Father Bill Moore and how that relationship evolved? Okay, sure. Well, first of all, something you said as a build up to this question, which I want to not correct you on, but I just want to change the dynamic of it is that Bill had his, his phone number on his website specifically so that people like you could call him. <laughs> so, so he was, you know, so those are the types of things that he's like, I want you to handle all the business stuff, but I need to be accessible to the people of my congregation, of my my community, but also, you know, I, I'm okay with people giving me a call because I have this duality. I'm a fine artist mm-hmm. and I'm also a priest. So, you know, and, you know, he had, you know, instances where, you know, people from his uh, congregation would call him and say, can I speak to you? Because I just need to speak to someone that I, you know, have a relationship with that has a relationship with God that I think the, those three elements mixing will help me what I need right now. And Bill would always talk to them. So, you know, he was a great man in that regard. But how I met Father Bill was through a sculptor out in uh, Pomona, California. And he asked me if I had, if I knew who Father Bill was. And I said, no, I don't. He said, well, you should go talk to him. And I, he said, I'll introduce you. So I set up the meeting and I went out to Bill's studio and I worked, you know, the short version of it is after that day, I told him I can sell this work. And from that day on, we worked for, together for 16 years until he passed away. And he was like a father figure to me by the end and a friend and just one of the most special people I ever met in my entire life and a fabulous, fabulous artist, you know, and, uh, but, uh, overview of Bill was that he went to theology school and wanted to get his degree in painting as well. And, uh, the superior said to him, we don't really think that that's a great idea (laughs) to just focus on theology. So Bill thought he was going to have to leave theological school because uh, he wouldn't be able to get his fine art to be in painting as well. But he said he just never heard back from him again. So he just got both degrees and uh, he went on to be a 
be a painter and he decided the public is often asked to assist in support of the arts, whether it's a theater in your town or, you know, a new venue that's going up or a museum, something like that. And Bill thought, what if I did the opposite of that? Hmm. And I use art to support the public. Hmm. So, so he, through the sales of his work, he never received any money for his paintings. They were all paid directly to his congregation through the sale of his pieces. And he was one of the biggest financial benefactors of his order for the whole time he was alive. And he was so successful at that and so dedicated to it. He had an art studio that was his church, you know, basically gave him a place to paint six days a week. And he was made, he was given the title of Minister of the Arts because the Congregation of the Sacred Hearts, his order is very strong in the idea that arts are an important part of the world and of people and of their religion, their their order, excuse me. Wow. Um, I just, I'm, I'm kind of jumping to this question, but when I, when I saw him at work in a short video that had been created, I was just fascinated by the studio itself. You know, the paint had formed into these stalactite, stalagmite formations. And he just, he had, you know, I don't know, kind of foil covering some of the paint, and he would dip his hands into it. It just seemed like an incredibly tactile, engaged painter. Um, do you have any thoughts about him as a creative artist in terms of how he worked? Oh, yeah. I mean, first and foremost, he would stand in front of every canvas he stood in front of. He had no idea what it was going to be like at the end. He didn't have any plan. He said, I wanted, you know, I want a blue abstract and nothing. It just all was done through inspiration. And as the painting proceeded or progressed, excuse me, he would change on the fly and add to what he thought the rest of it needed to be. And as far as, you know, the paint stalag, you know, whatever you called it, that, I mean, yeah, I mean, you should have seen the floor of his studio. We moved his studio three times and the landlord was like, you're lucky we love you so much, Father Bill. And they're like, we'll take care of this. They're like, just go ahead. We'll figure out how to get this. And he would put down stuff on the floor and it would all start out like, I'm not going to get it all messy. It, it just, but that's how he, that's how he, that, he had paintbrushes, but he was, there was, there was a, a methodology to how he did things, but it was, part of the methodology was being creative and being open-minded to doing things on the fly, which is interesting because there are times where people would ask if Bill could commission something based on a painting that he had previously done. Oh. And he would say, sure, I'll try, I'll, I'll try. But he said, you know, that blue isn't a blue that's in a can. He's like, I just made that on that piece. So he's like, I'll try and do it again. But I don't know. I don't remember how I got it to that point. It just became that point at one, on one day. And I don't remember how long ago that was, but I will try. And, you know, he was very successful at it, but he said, people just have to understand that I don't know what is coming out. It's, it's through inspiration and curiosity and just the love of the craft. And he liked to use found objects as well, didn't he? They often, or sometimes at least cropped up in his paintings. Yeah, everyone, pretty much. I don't think there's one that was, that didn't. Huh. I mean, you might not, see, you might not see it visibly, but mm -hmm. theoretically, for Bill, what that meant to him was that he took an object or an item that was considered dead or discarded or useless, and he put it into a painting that was vibrant and full of life and new, and he said it's the idea about its redemption, its rebirth, it's the idea of taking his other job and putting it into, you know, subtly into his, 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 his paintings, and so it meant a lot to him that whether people could see them or not, he knew that they were there and they were important just for the idea of how the painting was, you know, constructed. The experience of someone viewing a painting, it's a very personal experience and it's very difficult to kind of extrapolate from that and imagine what others feel. But did you get feedback from people who looked at Father Bill's work and said, uh, this is the kind of effect it has on me, or there's a certain way that he has of configuring the, the canvas that speaks to me. Did you ever get any feedback um, from people about yeah, that? There was, there, there, yeah, there was always, you know, I mean, people, I think the overwhelming feeling people got from Bill's work that were attracted, that were attracted to it is that it felt very welcoming. You know, I mean, even when he had hard lines and pieces, mm -hmm. they weren't things that, you know, kind of overtook the painting. He had a guy, he had a, de a definite idea about balance and color fields and textures. You know, I mean, he's, 
and you know people you know people found all sorts of different things and you know they would you know they would tell bill things about his paintings that you know they just couldn't believe that he didn't know about and he's like you know i like, i didn't think that but he's like i'm glad that you feel that way like he's like you know he was open to anyone's interpretation of it because he said they're abstract you know and you know one of the funniest things that bill someone told bill that his sermons were as abstract as his paintings and he just said well i guess i'm doing my job then you know what i mean so so he was he was a funny funny man and funny when you were t earlier today you you talked about the idea of tactile and and, and and touch and so texture was as much of much of uh an, of, of as much importance to bill as was color you know mm -hmm. because he felt that with the human hand and the oils in the human hands, touching his paintings was fine by Bill because he said the oils in the human hand uh, that's excreted from your hands in combination with the plastics of the acrylics in his paintings, it actually makes them better. So he was open to it. He's like, as long as your hands are clean, I, you can touch my paintings whenever you want. And he would even put up signs that shows us that said, please touch the art, wow. which was funny because he did it at a group show and someone saw that and was touching Father Bill's paintings and went over to another artist's work and started touching that. And the gallery director was like, what are you doing? And the person was like, it says touch the art. He's like, no, no, I'm sorry, because he didn't specify. That's just Bill's work over there. Please don't touch this. So, you know, the cardinal sin of all gallery, anything art worldwide is touching art. But Bill was really into it. He loved it. And he did a show specifically where everyone that was in attendance was blind. You know, so he, he believed in it that much. You know, so, but his whole thing was about slowing down and taking life and, and stopping and looking and feeling and touching and seeing and just and just just kind of believing that there's magic in things that you can feel through something that is creative. That was really his vibe. That was his whole thing, you know. Tom, um, what I noticed when I started to find more and more of his work, initially I was looking mostly at, at abstracts, but then as I dug further, I discovered the crosses that he created, which were often on very, well, let, let me just say much smaller canvases than some of the other more abstract pieces. Um, mm -hmm. When did those start to enter his um, his life? Uh, was that something that came fairly early? Because it seemed like, um, a form and a style and a size that he really liked to work with, uh, just judging by the number that I was able to find. How did that appear in his work? Uh, it, it, I think it appeared from the fact that he found that there was, he didn't really, his paintings would never be considered, if you looked at 85% of what he painted, that they were quote unquote religious paintings or paintings mm -hmm. that were considered done by a priest and they have a message about God or whatever they did not they were you know it was all about interpretation but so with the, with the crosses what in, what interested Bill about them was that they were seven by five inches and he would do he would do a bunch of them you know and he would paint and he he worked so hard on those he treated them like, like they were four by five foot canvases like he was really particular about making them as beautiful as he could but uh what what those meant to Bill was the idea of that the interpretation of a cross. He's like it can be considered a symbol in Catholicism, but he's like it's also there's an idea of a mathematical figure and an idea of of, of perspective and 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 he's like it's not just a cross to everybody, you know. And so so that was important to him. But and the other part of it was that he did small paintings because he wanted people that had access to lesser amounts of money for his work. They wanted, he wanted people to be, to have them. And the people found them very, very peaceful. And they really sold, they, they always sold. Like whenever he made them, they just sold and, and, uh, and people would buy them in bunches. And the fun thing about that was they would put, you know, five and five in, a, in their house and they could just switch them around. So it was kind of like interactive art, like tic-tac-toe. You could just move them around and, you know, keep changing the art in your home. So he liked that. And, they were, and, and the other thing about them is the big element of those was it was a great, it was a great thing for fundraising for schools in Southern California because Bill would always be donating those to them, and and so if they retailed at four hundred dollars, they would sell for eight hundred or a thousand because people were being charitable, and he's like these sizes, they work well, they travel well, and people always buy them, so these uh, fundraisers are always successful with those pieces that I donate, and the other thing about that is. When Bill was ever asked about donating something to an, an auction, he never gave people his old pieces that were just stuck in his gallery and they couldn't sell. Like you would think he'd be like, oh, great. Yeah, I have six right here. Go ahead. I've had these for two years. No one likes these. He's like, he would always do new ones. 
He said, I want them to be as fresh as possible and I want them to have the best chance to sell. I'm not going to give them things that have been sitting, you know, so he was very particular about that. I um, I am so grateful, as I shared with you, that I did use his telephone number and call him and uh, explain to him, I think, what had become kind of a quandary in my life over the years is, you know, how does artistry connect with ministry? And for him, he was so clear about that. I mean, maybe if there was a time of indecision about it, maybe at some point in his life, he clearly worked it through. And I just remember him saying, you know, you have to take this artistic side very seriously. Don't lose that. And mm -hmm. uh, so it feels to me like it's been part of the inspiration for me to have done a lot of the work that I did during the pandemic. And um, so I, I'm, I'm really trying to carry forward that thought with me, the seriousness of it, be dedicated to it. You know, this is a creative energy that wants expression. I, I, having known him for as long as you did, this is probably an impossible question, but is there one particular, um, I don't know, insight or wisdom or direction in his life that you really find that you carry with you, Tom, as you go forward in your own work with artists and in your life? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, he, he when, when you say be serious about it, the one thing I would encourage you to, you know, as you're taking those sentiments with you is that that doesn't be serious about it. I think that really could be considered work hard at that work uh -huh. hard at this and, and because when you say serious that might supplant your ability to have fun and right. bill was all about having fun so he was like work hard have fun be nice to people and you know just you got it you if you don't believe in yourself then he's like you're never going to be able to get the public to believe in, in your work you know what i mean and that's kind of true with anything i mean i'm sure you speak in front of people all the time you know you have to the words you create and the messages you convey to the people at your church, they have to believe that you, ha you have to believe in what you're saying to them. I would imagine. I'm mean, speculating when I say that, but I was at the case. You feel like yeah, you, one would hope. You say, yeah, yes. Yes. So, <laughs> but, but as far as taking, taking it with me, you know, um, you know, I mean, he was so knowledgeable about art. And, and the other thing is that he always went around and he always went to other shows and he, and he bought things from other artists and he just wanted people to, you know, whether it was a small piece that was $50 or whether it was, you know, a little, you know, and, and, and the other thing is Bill was never afraid to have any type of friend as long as they were nice and they were interesting. He didn't care. I mean, they, people thought Bill had the weirdest friends, but he did, but they were all artists from his art colony. And, you know, and, and he was, and he said, well, I mean, if you think about my other job, you know, the guy that I, you know, that based my life on, you know, he was considered to have odd friends at times. So he's like, you know, so, so he said, you know, I, I he said, I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing. And, and he had, and, and, you know, he, he just had this funny way of, you know, I, I, I always, I think you and I spoke briefly about this, but when, when I would be either introducing Bill to clients and the clients knew they were going to meet Bill, they'd say, Oh, oh what, what, what do I do? What do I say? What do I, what do I call him? I said, I said, you can call him Bill. I said, you can call him father Bill. You can call him father. I said, he's really nice. I said, I, I know that it seems like, you're not quite sure what to say, but please just like, he's just a regular guy that just happens to be a really great artist and a priest. And so, and then I would always, or at a show when people would say, is that him? Can I go say hi to him? I'd say, sure, of course. And then I'd have to go and diplomatically get them away from Bill because they would find him so fascinating that I'd have to give someone else a chance to talk to Bill because, and he's like, and people would say, I love him so much. He's such a wonderful man. I said, I know that's what I told you an hour ago when you sat down with them, you know, and they were so happy. And, and, and he was just, a, and he loved to talk to people about, you know, what he did and how he created the things, but not, not from a technical perspective. He's just like, I just love this. I love this, this, this thing came out like this and I'm so happy, you know, cause he was by having that element of not knowing exactly what was going to be in his paintings when they were finished, they often gave him a thrill for a long, long time or forever because he was so surprised that it came out the way it did too, you know? So he was, it's a happy, a happy kind of, idea of things coming together. Well, it was a very happy moment in my life when I came across his work, had an opportunity to talk with him. I feel like I'm still inspired by him. And another happy moment is crossing paths with you, Tom, and having an opportunity to talk with you and learn from you. And we're so grateful that you were a guest on our podcast today. And we really appreciate all of your insights, your reflections, and the, uh, the serious playfulness with which you engage your own work. So we're 
we're grateful to you for having been a guest on our podcast. Well, thank you to, you know, you and Leslie, it's been really nice. And I, I, you know, I, I was happy, you know, if someone calls me and tells me that they spoke to father bill, I'm immediately at my best opportunity going to call them back. But, you know, because ha- part of it is, I just know that I know what you're going to say to me. You're not going to say, yeah, I called father bill and he was really dismissive and he was mean. And he told me I shouldn't do my art. And he's like, and he said, quit and don't even be a priest anymore. Like go do, go, go to FedEx or something. You no, know, he would, I knew what you were going to say, but I wanted to hear how you were going to say it because that's just the effect he had on people. It was in so, and as I said, that's what you told me. And I was so happy that you got to, because, I'm always happy when people got to talk to him because he, he was so, he was so great. He was just a really good man. And, you know, he, he loves to laugh. He's funny, funny man, loved to have a glass of wine and just like, you know, he just had it, you know, I'll tell you one, one story. When Bill was very ill, I went out to his house and hospice was in his house at that point. And so I would go out and visit him. And so he fell asleep while I was talking to me and I, in his, friend rich who's you know been, went to theology school who was also at the house just said he falls asleep a lot now he's like so but if he falls asleep he said don't worry just hang out and then he'll wake back up and so bill fell asleep and i just started reading a magazine and about 10 minutes later he popped his head up and he looked at me and the first thing he said was aren't i a great company <laughs> i just said oh my god i said you are still so funny and you're so sick and i loved him he kept it going until the day he died he was such a sweet guy so i'm glad that you got to meet him and i wish you the best of luck with your show coming up Thank and you, you should be, be, be very proud of what you've created and uh, i hope that your the members of your community come out and check out your work and just have a great evening all right Tom, thank you so much and blessings for uh, 2023.